Hello and welcome to Stupid Ancient History with Midgley and Taylor and our expert, non-expert and special guest James, Lord High Commander of the Science Cupboard, first of his name and knower of nothing. Hello. As always, we're wearing togas, we're eating olives and today we're going to look at the invasion of Lars Persena. Previously on Stupid Ancient History, we've been looking at the various problems faced by the newly emerging Republic following the expulsion of the Tarquin Kings. They should have killed him. They definitely should have killed him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and at first, Superbus tries to regain the throne in the Tarquin Conspiracy um, by trying to get supporters in Rome to sneak him back in. Him and his evil schemes. We've talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Then after that failed, he sought the aid of the surrounding kings to take Rome by force during the Wars of Independence. Or as we're calling them, Tark Wars. <laughs> so, a long time ago, in a country not so far away, Superbus called upon the VA and the Tarquini to help him take Rome. But the consuls, Brutus and Valerius, had other ideas. They did indeed. So the two armies meet in battle, and after a day's fierce fighting, neither could get the upper hand. And to top it all off, Brutus and Arons, Superbus's eldest son, killed each other in battle. Kebab. Kebab. <laughs> <laughs> However, <laughs> following an omen in the night, Superbus's allies fled the battle leaving Rome free. Wasn't an omen. <laughs> yeah, it was a spooky voice coming from the forest that scared them all off. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> After his initial defeat, Superbus seems to have basically abandoned his previous allies, the VA and the Tarquini. They've not really done him that much good, have they, to be honest? No, they were less than successful. <laughs> um, and he's taken shelter in the state of Clusium as a guest of their king, Lars Porsena. Who's that? Doesn't sound very Italian. <laughs> <laughs> True, but Clusium is one of the most powerful states in the region, and uh, Porsena was a highly respected warrior. So it actually makes sense. Okay, so... Not the sort of wimps who are going to peg it if they just voice tells them to do it. Yeah, especially coming from a forest. <laughs> it's like, uh, go home, all right? Yep, see ya. So Superbus appeals to Porsena in a kind of two-pronged approach, that because he and Porsena share kind of Etruscan origins, um, it would be shameful to leave Superbus in exile. So again, he's trading on his Etruscan roots. But more importantly, he warns him that this new form of government without kings will spread and that he should not to let the new fashion of expelling kings go unpunished liberty they urge possessed fascination enough in itself unless kings defend their authority with as much energy as their subjects show in search of liberty Too so much. basically fight back with yeah, as much yeah. watch out because you're next so, clearly concerned about the future of his own rule, it seems to work on Porsena, and he gathers his army, and they're ready, and they march off to Rome. So he's got his new army. Yep. What happens when he gets to Rome? Well, before he even gets there, the Senate are thrown into a bit of a panic. Okay. Um, it's not just Porsena and his armies that they're worried about. It's their own people. So they don't think the <clears throat> plebs will have the stomach for a fight against... A formidable army. They've just been given loads of money, haven't they? They should be happy as anything <laughs> to defend Rome. Exactly. Yeah, they should be. Yeah. But they've still got no access to government. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if they start fighting another war, they might start, you know, wanting a vote or something yeah, disgusting pesky, like that. Pesky <laughs> plebs. So in pre preparation for what may actually be quite a long and protracted war. What? Just... just that's a normal for them, isn't well, it? It's more than one day. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, you can't rely on mystery voices from the forest anymore. I disagree. But something <laughs> something <laughs> stupid will happen. We'll see. Um, so, preparing for a long and protracted war, the Senate introduced a series of tax breaks for a short period so the plebs aren't overburdened by the excessive war taxes that can easily be paid by the patricians mm. of the Senate. Yeah, and the Senate also makes sure there is enough food to feed everyone, regardless of cost. Okay. Bit of so, a welfare state going on. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this issue of war debt, without giving too much away, this becomes an issue later on. So early on, they're like, oh, we'll sort you out, don't worry, yeah. you're going to have to fight, but we'll look after everyone. 
So the result being that the Senate received great acclaim um, from the plebs, and just in case they'd forgotten, the name Tarquin is universally hated. They're not going to forget that, are they? No, they're not going to let them forget. <laughs> they kicked out one guy just because he had a similar name. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, do you remember that guy? No, Ooh, let me tell you about the Tarquins. So the Romans are all tooled up, ready for their fight. Yep. Did it go well? Mm, is, Rome, is Rome fortified at this point? They yeah, they've got the walls. Oh, okay. But even still, not so well. Okay. <laughs> so it seems the Romans were so busy sorting out their war committees and special war taxes that by the time they'd sorted that, uh, Persena was already in Roman land. That's so <laughs> Roman. <laughs> and it gets worse. Oh, God. So Persena actually got within the boundaries of Rome itself, not just some weird fields over there. Um, so he, he was within the boundaries of Rome and he captures the Janiculum Hill. You're going to have to tell me what that right, is. Right, <laughs> so it's, um, if you think of the map of Rome, you know where the Vatican is on the other side of the river? Mm. It's just south of that on where what is now Trastevere. Okay, so it's, it's one of the seven hills. Yeah, right, but it's okay. on the other side of the river, it's right, Palatine okay. Hill, which is the important bit. Yeah. And what's worse, they were heading towards the bridge that crossed the Tiber and would allow them to get straight into the Forum. They really should have kept an eye on that. Yeah, <laughs> lookouts, scouts maybe. <laughs> yeah. Just a guy with looking in one direction. Yeah, you would have thought like, you know, a farmer would have gone, oh, I'll go tell him about that. <laughs> get out of my fields! <laughs> <laughs> but as luck would have it, the Romans have an ace up their sleeve. Um, it's a descendant of one of the triplets who saved Rome under the rule of Tullus Hostilius. The one Remember that survived. The, yeah. <laughs> um, he's called Horatius Cocles. No, Cocles. <laughs> Cocles. <laughs> no, Cocles. <laughs> now, whether he actually is one of these descendants or they just went, oh, that sounds like a good story. Yeah. But yeah, Horatius did, Cocles. Do we not have another set of convenient triplets that can invite another no. set of convenient triplets? <laughs> <laughs> no, they've done that one already. <laughs> they've got to come up with new things. So, Cockles is here to save the day. <laughs> Cockles. Cockles. No, Cockles sounds better. Fair enough. Cockles sounds very Greek. Quiet, you. <laughs> so yeah, he's ready to save the day. Yeah, okay. All by him lo his loan, well, presumably. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Livy gives us a bit more detail. Hmm. So he happened to be on guard at the bridge when he happened saw... Happened to be there. <laughs> happened. Is that one of these very convenient mm. things again? When he saw the Janiculum Hill taken by a sudden assault and the enemy rushing down from it to the river, whilst his own men, a panicked mob, were deserting their posts and throwing away their arms. <laughs> Why would you throw your weapons into a river? If someone was coming at me, I wouldn't just want one knife. I'd want more than one. I'd be picking them all up the and trying to attach him to kind of any extremity that I had to it's Just them. all over yourself. <laughs> like Some a, kind of battle machine. Like a Super death fun. hedgehog. A death hedgehog. <laughs> yes, yes. If the, if the British army had death hedgehogs, that would be well, amazing. I mean, I mean, Rome basically conquered the world without them. Imagine if they did have them. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of hills that could have just rolled one down. <laughs> Release the hogs! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh, God. <laughs> so, but yeah, why are these... So there's an army running at them, and all these guys decide, I don't need my sword anymore. <laughs> just going to leave this in a war. What's oh, this for? So anyway. God. Yeah, so pretty much... He's there on the bridge. Everyone else is chucking stuff in the river. Um, and he knows he can't fend <laughs> Like off. a scrap merchant round, like, <laughs> just rubbing his hands. <laughs> Lovely. Help you more, lads. <laughs> nice one. So, yeah, he, he's there. And he knows he can't fend off all of Posenna's army on his own. That would be ridiculous. It would I don't be. like the way you say it. <laughs> it would be. So, Cockley's decides he's going to order the men behind him Oop. to start... Cockles, <laughs> decides he's going to order the men behind him to start destroying the bridge. What? <laughs> Livy? If so, only I had a sword or something I could use to smack yeah. this bridge up with. No, it's alright, he's got, he's, uh, he's got his weaponised hedgehog, he's fast. <laughs> <laughs> Smash the bridge up. Oh, throw my sword away, mate. Mm. So Livy says he shouted to them to break down the bridge by sword or fire. <laughs> Where did they got fire from? That's what I want to know. Burning the swords. The swords. <laughs> or by whatever means they could, just blow on it, it'll be fine. <laughs> he would meet the enemy's attack so far as one man could keep them at bay. He advanced to the head of the bridge amongst the Romans, whose backs alone were visible to the enemy. 
he stood out as he fronted the enemy armed for fight at close quarters. The enemy were astounded at his extraordinary courage. Well, yeah, I get that. Like, you know, one one guy kind of re- ready to face down an army. They're going to do something stupid like single combat, aren't they? Well, I mean, he's not going to just fight any old like, chunk. Bows and arrows do exist. <laughs> they do, <laughs> or javelins. Javelins. Or just hefty rocks. Yeah, they, there are myriad ways they could yeah. get rid of this bloke. But anyway, he's, he's deciding he's not going to fight everyone, not just any old chump. He's got another idea. Livy? So, looking round with eyes dark with menace upon the Etruscan chiefs, he challenged them to single combat and mocked them all for being the slaves of tyrant kings. Just say no and kill him. <laughs> yeah, so call him. Well, they wouldn't do that, would they? Because that would be kind of a slight on their honour and their reputation. But he's already calling them out. Yeah, exactly. So they're not going to do that. That's well, just not an just, option. Just murder him brutally <laughs> and turn around to him and didn't see nothing. <laughs> and then just carry on. Yeah, anyone got anything to say? No, 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 no. So anyway, the various chiefs, they finally snap and they go to attack Cockles. First, they all start throwing their javelins from all directions at him. What so they've taken your in, idea. Okay. Into the river. <laughs> yeah. But he uh, he's able to casually block them all with his shield. How big's his shield? Of course he is. Just how good he is. Yeah, just does he just start like spinning round with his shield trying to knock them all off? He's just Probably. that good. <laughs> anyway, but as this is happening, he hears the sound of the bridge crashing into the river uh, and he leaps into the river and swims away to safety. <laughs> Not as brave as you made me to believe that was going to be. <laughs> so, bridge gone, cockles have swam away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is her, this is his home habitat, he should be in water. Um, what, what do they do now, just give up? Well, not quite, um, but it's certainly the end of the fighting for Cockleys. Aww. What's he, is he just literally swam away? Well, he did swim away, but according to Livy, while swimming the Tiber, he received a spear to the buttocks. A <laughs> 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 mysterious wound. <laughs> so, so them calling him out, him calling them out and having a one-on-one fight, it, it was too dishonourable not to do that. But while this one bloke's way spearing him in the ass is absolutely fine. Perfectly fine. <laughs> That's fine. Absolutely. So anyway, now he's okay. he's unable to fight anymore. <laughs> At least he wouldn't do bad. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> so anyway, he's unable to fight anymore. Um, but the Romans do, however, provide him with plenty of land, wealth, and honours for saving them. Could he can't spear up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> but then back to Paul Senna. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, forgot about that. Well, I'm a bit, I'm, you kind of, te- you know, kind of derailed me by spearing people in the bum. I didn't spear anyone in the bum. Thank you, you very you much. Said it. So yeah, so Pacelli is still they're still knocking about. They just turn and leave and go home. Yeah, I mean it, it's not all over. Okay, yeah. so, it wouldn't um, be, would it? No. So because his initial attack failed um, because of Cockley's... Are there no other bridges, presumably? No. That's okay. It. Um, Paul Senna decides to adopt a kind of blockade or siege to force the Romans to surrender. Doesn't seem very Roman. No. Like they, they, they like big open battles as well, don't they? And also sieges are boring. <laughs> they are. They're quite tedious, aren't they? So, before the arrival of Paul Senna and his men, the Romans did actually do something useful. Um, they brought as much produce and livestock as they could within the city wall defences. Okay. So they can stay there. Yeah, which was a good job because Pacenna's men were running wild, kind of destroying the farms in the fields. More to scare the Romans than anything. Seems a bit counterproductive, though. If you go in somewhere that's got fields and food, yeah, I, why I, would you cart loads when you can take theirs? Especially with Superbus, like, oh, I'm going to rule this land again. Burn it all! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but don't forget the Romans have taken all the food in, so... Yeah, true. What are they burning? But even though, um, Paul Senna thinks he's got the upper hand. Um, and the, the Romans, but the Romans and particularly their leaders have another idea. Livy? So, for the consuls Valerius, for the consul Valerius, I should say, determined to get an opportunity of attacking them when they were scattered in large numbers over the fields, allowed small raids to pass unnoticed whilst he was reserving himself for vengeance on a larger scale. Right, okay, so we're kind of l- l- luring them in a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So at this point, he, he said consul. Uh, 
is there a dictator at this point, or have they just? I think they're still kind of deciding what to do because right, it was a okay. bit of a shock. Um, so Valerius and a group of men organise a cattle drive out of Rome through the Esquiline Gate, which is the furthest gate away from the enemy. So right, they've okay. got to go round the city walls of Rome to get to it. And he's hoping to draw the enemy in from their camps. Yeah, meanwhile he organises some of his best commanders to lay in wait and hidden at key positions between the enemy and the Equestline Gate. Okay. Um, so as the cattle drive begins, there's a big noise, lots of cows, lots of mooing. Um, word obviously gets to the enemy. There's a load of cows over there. <laughs> Um, burn them. <laughs> burn them. <laughs> this is just what Valerius has planned. And the enemy, en masse, head to the Esquiline Gate to grab a load of cows. Once they're there, however, Valerius springs his trap and... Does he not anticipate this? Well, no, Valerius is waiting for them. No, that's what I mean. The, 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 I was like, oh, there's some cows there. That's not suspicious at all. <laughs> no, not at all. So anyway, he springs his trap and... The attackers trapped... Unequal to the fight and with every way of escape blocked, were cut to pieces. That put an end to these irregular and scattered raids on the part of the Etruscans. Okay. So that's them done for now. For now. But we're back to the same situation. A siege. Uh, so Superbus and what's the other guy called? Paul Senna. Poor Senna, that's it. Um, so one guy and a smashed up bridge yep. is ca- <laughs> kind of stopped there. <laughs> smashed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so so far, this war equates to a bridge, yeah. a guy with a spear in his bum, and a row some, of the cattle. Yeah, yeah, and some cows. It's not going great for them, is it? No, um, but it's not over yet. I didn't think it would be. <laughs> so, um, as the ongoing siege um, drags on, uh, we also see it starts to frustrate certain Romans, particularly one guy, a guy called Gaius Mucius. Yeah, and it annoys him so much that he has a cunning plan to end the war instantly, which is to assassinate Lars Persena. It's not going to be cunning, is it? It's, he's just <laughs> going to run at him straight on. So, <clears throat> even though he initially intends to act alone, because he's just like, I'm sick of this, I'm well, going to go over there and stab him. This isn't particularly Roman, though, is it? Assassination? No. But desperate times. Right, okay. So, they seem very willing to bend their own morality when it suits them. Yeah, well, shh, stop asking difficult questions. <laughs> <laughs> so he initially intends to act alone because he's so annoyed, but he's worried that if he's caught before his work is done, um, he'll be brought back to Rome as a deserter and probably executed. Mm. He doesn't want that. So he arranges a meeting with the Senate, and then when he's brought before the Senate, he says... I wish, he said, fathers, to swim the Tiber, and if I can, enter the enemy's camp, not as a raider, nor to inflict revenge for their attacks. I am proposing, with heaven's help, a greater deed. Right, so he's bigging himself up a little bit. Yeah, right he's saying, I'm not just going to go over there and go sick at him. I've got a plan. Is, is he... Is he just a is he a general? Is he not? He's not just a guy. Just a, just a dude. Just a guy. Okay. So he conceals a sword on his person. He swims the Tiber and sneaks into. Didn't go well for the last one who did that. <laughs> yeah, where yeah. he plans to strike when everyone is preoccupied and all in one place. Payday. I was going to ask you were they having a party or something. Not quite, but yeah, he's going to strike at payday. Right. Okay. Sword concealed across the river. How, how does he know when their payday is? He's just that good. <laughs> Insider info. <laughs> so the scene is set. The Etruscan army are all lining up to receive their pay, but there's one slight problem with his with Musius's plan. Go on. He doesn't know what Posena looks like. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I think I've got a coin with his face on it at the least or something. <laughs> yeah, and he can't just ask someone, can he? Uh, uh, which, which one? Which one's your king? What? <laughs> 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 Without fear of like revealing did, himself. Yeah. Did he not think of this before he got there? No. Right, great. No. But, no, no, none of the wise senators mentioned it either. No, no one, they all just assumed he knew. So, okay. not wanting to miss his chance anyway, um, when his turn comes in the line for getting his pay. like an ID card. Any rando can just turn up and get paid <laughs> for being in an army. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, he gets to the desk, he's about to get his pay, and not wanting to miss his chance, he swings his sword at the man handing out the money. Instantly killing Persena's secretary. <laughs> yeah, like, is it? would it be normal for kings to personally give out cash? Well, 
He seems to think so. I really hope they kill him in a painful <laughs> way. But anyway, he's promptly grabbed by Persena's guards, disarmed, and dragged away. Yeah, how was his master plan? <laughs> how did they foil him? Well, I know, it is ridiculous, and I agree, James, it is very bad planning. However, it's not the end of the plan completely. Okay, this is going to track on for a bit then. <laughs> So, Musius is brought before Persena. Just is. like he wanted. <laughs> Just like he wanted, but yeah. with no sword. Yeah, he was understandably not too happy about the whole situation. He Which be, part? The fact that someone's trying to kill him, I suppose. Well, no, yeah. they think much care his assistant's just been knifed. Or <laughs> well, the fact, how do you not know who I am? I'm mm. Lars Persena. And also, can I have my payback? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so anyway, um, he has poor old Musius flung to the ground and demands to know just who the hell he thinks he is that he can come in and kill the great Lars Persena. Mm -hmm. What do you think you're playing at, son? What are you doing? To which Musius replies... I am a citizen of Rome, he said. Men call me Gaius Musius. As an enemy, I wish to kill an enemy. And I have as much courage to meet death as I had to inflict it. It is the Roman nature to act bravely and to suffer bravely. I am not alone in having made this resolve against you. Behind me, there is a long list of those who aspire to do the same honour. Okay. So basically, watch your back, sunshine. So Somebody um, else is coming for yeah. you. To which... I mean, this can't really be news. They're at war. Yeah. Like, it's not just me who wants to kill you. There's other Romans, like, obviously. But he's pushing the point. So Persena is not overly impressed with this. And he's, fair to say, absolutely furious and a little bit worried. So he wants to know more. And he's saying, I'm not accepting that. Um, and he starts suggesting that if Musius doesn't go along with what mm. he says, they're going to roast him alive. Spit roast! <laughs> it's an actual punishment. It's not It's not like we're going to ban, exile you, we've locked you out of the city. They're actually going to do a proper... They're going to roast him alive, that's what he says. Proper punishment, okay. Well, to which Musius shows Persena that actually he's the guy with all the cojones, and replies... <laughs> Look, Musius cried, and learn how lightly those regard their bodies who have some great glory in view. Then he plunged his right hand into a fire burning on the altar, whilst he kept it there roasting, there as if he were devoid of all sensation. Okay. <laughs> we're going to roast you alive. Not if I do it to myself yeah. first. <laughs> what a wrong you can... can't roast me. I'll burn <laughs> I'm gonna... myself. I'm going to roast me first. <laughs> so needless to say, by this point, Persenna is having second thoughts about being able to take Rome for... Superbus, if it's this is what he's going to fight. the city of nutters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to roast you alive. <laughs> I'll beat you to it. We've got hedgehogs, we've got sage on masochists. Is that going on? <laughs> we will think of the worst punishment for yeah, you. Did, Brilliant. Has Rome rebuilt their reputation? Or are they still thought of as like the rabble of killers and stuff they were at the beginning? Well, any reputation they have now is as complete mentalists <laughs> who will happily burn their own arms off. <laughs> So he, he, so this obviously puts the wind up Paul Senna thinking, how am I going to fight these guys? These are nuts. Um, and he, even be, he starts to negotiate with Rome um, that a peace treaty could be re reached if, and for some reason he wants the VA, you know, the guys who ran away the previous Because they're, they're a solid pair of hands. Yeah. They, they, whatever I need them to do, they'll definitely Well, then he wants them to be kind of ensured their independence ah kind of, okay don't mess with them we all know I, th the I, th I thought you were going to say they were going to be mediators or something. <laughs> yeah um and he says no we can do this if the va are granted their independence and rome can provide some certain securities i.e right. hostages <laughs> ah right okay but despite everything it seems that burning your own extremities off in a sacred fire is not quite enough to finally push Persena over to fully honour a ceasefire. What does? <laughs> a woman called Cluella. Cluella? In a gown? Yeah. So Cluella found herself in the unenviable position of being a hostage of the Etruscans. I don't think I like where this is going to go. <laughs> so, yeah, unenviable position. Um, basically, when the Etruscans took the Janiculum Hill, they also took control of all the surrounding areas, and it's most likely she was there, minding her own business, got captured. Mm. And yeah. then ended up being one of these hostages Persena demanded. 
and they always seem to be women. I wonder why. I'm sure we catch Easy a to lot catch. of men as well. Easy <laughs> to catch. Probably want to do other things to them as well. Well, that's why I d didn't really like where this could go. Mm. So well, it doesn't. Okay. Because Cluella is having none of this hostage lark. Okay. She's not having it. So she gets a group of other women, you know, gathers them all together, and they decide, nah, not having this. She swims, they all swim the Tiber to safety. Yeah, whilst There's a lot is... of swimming of the Tiber. <laughs> there, there is. is. Yeah, whilst Persena's men are trying to skewer them with javelins. <laughs> Miss the bumps. Like spearfishing, <laughs> spearfishing for a woman. Yeah, it's like, there they are, get them. <laughs> so, I mean, this obviously pushes Paul Senna into this decision that he's never, even the women are mental. Yeah. They're swimming through a river while we're chucking all kinds at them. Is that what puts him <laughs> off? That's what puts him off. So after, <laughs> after the burning man... And now, swimming woman. <laughs> Women are insane as well. well Persena faces the fact that these lot are not going to give up. You know? okay. We've captured them. That guy's burnt his hand off. That guy's fought a bridge. She's just swum off with all our hostages. Um, he decides it's more hassle than it's worth. And he just goes up. Wow. <laughs> That's all it took. I mean, so, I wouldn't want to be the poor one that had to stick his hand in the fire. I think he's made quite a large shot. He has, yeah. but um, what, what was it? Cloella. Cloella, yeah. Um, so, like, she read, led this uprising of women to swim away. <laughs> uh, what happens to her? Because that slave who grasped up the plot, yeah. he got lands and titles and monies yeah. and stuff. Well, she gets a statue, James. Not great. It's not, I just wonder what it looked like. Was it her, like lay like that, you know, like as if she was flat swimming with an at, with like a spear, just like sticking somewhere. Is it not still standing? Do we not know what it looks no, like? No, it's not Aww. still. There. But yeah, she gets a statue, it's which is right. nice. It's okay. So after this second attempt to take Rome, um, it's not gone well. Yeah. But we've yeah. seen this again. This ongoing assault of. Superbus of Tarquinius. He is not going to let this lie. He's going to go around everyone he possibly He's can. He's got to run out of people eventually. <coughs> well, yeah, all the <laughs> time. Um, but it's not going well. And even although this is much more successful in that it actually gets to Rome, it gets to the Janiculum Hill than the previous one where yeah. they, just they ran away. off. <laughs> um, it's a, you know, it's almost like Rome's time is ticking down. Lots of people are coming for him. Tarquin isn't going to give up. This is why it's the wars of independence. Yeah. Rome is desperately having to scrap to do they, do continue they re, to survive. Do they retain that hill? Or they just give up the whole thing when they leave. Oh, they give up the whole hill. Right, They're just right. like, no, too much effort. Dude, that guy burnt his hand off. I'm not staying These here. These women then. swam away. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot, we cannot deal with this. <laughs> so yeah, so this is the second of the battles in the wars of independence, which come to shape Rome through this kind of fiery forge, and again we get. It's clear from this, this idea of why people are joining the Superbus. It's not that he's a nice guy, because we know he's not. Mm -hmm. It's this threat of a republic that other kings, other local rulers, do not like this at all. And this is why they're quite happy to chip in and attack like, Rome. Yeah. Until the going gets a bit too tough and then they just <laughs> until, like run away. Until someone swims. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, but again, we're back to this narrative tradition where heroes come and save the day. Yeah. You've got um, Cockles. Cockles. Good old Cockles, Cockles on his bridge fighting to the not death. Spear in his bum. Then you've got Moose here who goes and he doesn't kill Persena, but he burns his, his own hand hands off. off. Uh, and then Cloelia who swims away. So again, it's literary tradition. It's there to excite the story of the siege because, like I said, sieges can be boring. Yeah, it's a bit of similarity to some of the earlier stories where kind of heroes pop mm. up. The triplets. Mm. You know, it's yeah. interesting that the triplet family reappear in the form of Cocles, but it's obviously different because it's a siege and Rome's more developed and there's a lot less in this one particularly because there's no ghost voice from the forest. <laughs> there's a lot less kind of divine intervention or... yeah. yeah it's more about individual strength isn't it yeah it's, it's the heroes of rome these great people that they can they built rome rather than just oh it's the gods but well, yeah. they basically embody don't they the the characteristics of what a good roman should be oh yeah and it's also quite interesting a good swimmer. Swimmer. <laughs> yeah. it's also quite interesting that you've got a woman who is doing something 
like really positive, but she's not doing it as a victim. Yeah, she's like, refusing obviously, to be a victim. Because like the only ones that you've had so far are people like Lucretia who are very um, kind of you know humble and live up to these characteristics of how they want women to be and very dutiful but and everything. To them. But yeah, they are ultimately a victim and bad things happen to them where she is not. Is she? She's, she's basically just going sod you. I'm <laughs> swimming away. See you later. Yeah. Bye. So there you have it, our quick look at the invasion of Lars Persena and its impact on Rome. Uh, thank you for listening. We hope this has been useful. As always, leave us a comment below. And until next time, goodbye. Bye. Bye.